Maybe you heard about Grass because I said to uninstall it. Well, I'm gonna go through what is Grass, all the pros, all the potential cons, the feedback I gave the team when I spent an hour on the phone with the CEO, and how it all works in the ecosystem, as well as how you can verify for yourself if it's a trustworthy app. In the crypto world, the motto is don't trust, verify, meaning you should be able to put in a transaction and see what happened where, right? Just transparency, pure transparency. Now, when it comes to using a wallet or a dApp or an extension, you cannot necessarily see if this has transparency. So ideally, the team makes it very obvious for you so you can work out if it's good or bad. I'll give you a spoiler alert right now, though. I think Grass is pretty good. Let me show you why. So firstly, here is the Twitter here. They're coming into their final epoch tomorrow. Well, this was a few days ago. Either way, they're in their final epoch. Now, this is the actual website. So it's getgrass.io and it's earn a stake in the AI revolution. Get rewarded for your unused internet. If you kind of just scroll on down, it's going to scroll through the UI here. Keep on scrolling down and then you've got this video, learn about grass. I'll link it below, but this is the video here. And basically you've got an internet connection. You have an IP address. Your IP address is very, very valuable because with you know minimal electricity and maybe using, I'm not really sure, but let's say 20% of your bandwidth, you could have a script running that would go and visit a whole lot of different websites, scraping the data, that data can then be sold to AI companies and it can be fed via different learning models and that has value. Essentially, data is a new oil. It's very, very valuable and IP addresses are very valuable as well because you can go and spin up massive servers with AWS and things like that. However, if you try and get all the information on multiple different websites from the same IP address, then you will run into issues. Servers will block you because you look like spam because you essentially are spam and then you're chewing through all of their computing power and their bandwidth allowance. Now, this is what the dashboard looks like. There's a referral link that will be below. It's entirely up to you if you want to use it. I'll talk about my criticism on the project later on, but for now, this is what it looks like. This computer right now is connected and we're earning points. These points come from, in my case, referrals, but also from using the app in the past. Now, there's already services out there that do these sort of things. As an example, this one, Mermaid Screensaver. This here, you can go and get it for free. Free download, amazing. You can see in the reviews that they're taking your IP address and they're grabbing all this information, but you're not getting paid for it. Now I spoke to Andre and let's start to cover some of the fun. The things I wanna cover are in particular the extension and the fact that there was something off with it. The next thing I wanna cover is the team. Probably I'll cover the team first and the fact that they're quite private individuals, which gives them maybe not a very public persona. And if you don't have a public persona, it may not be conducive to thinking that the team's necessarily doxxed. And the third thing that I'll cover is the fact that they've been going at it for 400 days and there's no token, and they've already done a couple of raises, so VC raises. So Andre, he's the founder, he's the CEO. This is what he looks like. Now, his last name is not here on LinkedIn. Here is his Twitter, Dreish. These podcasts will be linked below so you can see him. His surname, I'm not going to try and pronounce, but there you can see it. Here's another podcast. Here's another podcast. If you scroll on down, you can listen to this one on Spotify. Here's maybe not a podcast, but there's some sort of video on basically what they're all building. And here's another video of what they're building. Now he is here. However, he doesn't like to put his face out there. And a lot of people don't. And to be perfectly honest, I can understand why. And here is his consensus speaker profile. Now you'll notice that he's a CEO of Wind Labs. This has also been a FUD point because the company is like called Grass and then there's Wind Labs and then there's a Wind Foundation. Now the foundation you kind of have to ignore because this is how it's done in crypto. The US is not a crypto friendly place. In fact, most of the world is not a crypto friendly place. So what's commonly done is a foundation is set up. The foundation is normally in the Cayman Islands. The Caymans are far more open to this sort of thing. It's expensive but it's done in a legal way. In this occasion, the Wind Foundation is in the Caymans and then Wind Labs, they're in the Bahamas. Those that know about FTX know that the Bahamas was where FTX were when they went bankrupt and just were criminal. Now that doesn't really mean anything. If you think that people have been dodgy in the Bahamas, it's not really how it works. It's just the fact that some countries are just so difficult in order to make things work in terms of bureaucracy that they want to leave. And this is very prevalent right now for the US and I would assume Canada and definitely in Europe. 
Now let's go over the exact FUD and how I've basically changed my mind on this. So the FUD piece was this video. This video was from Light Crypto, someone I've never heard of, someone I'm not subscribed to, and someone I'll never watch again. Now basically, as far as the research goes, it seems quite decent. And this was brought to my attention, and then I went and checked some things, and one thing led to another. Now, just so you get the full picture of what happened here, this person has apparently already had an issue with grass, and they reached out to him months ago, and apparently they didn't want to speak to the team in order to just work out why there was FUD happening, or like what the claims were, or anything like that. Now I hate the idea of fudding projects, and in case you don't know, I did some research and I said, I'm removing this app, and I suggest you remove this app, and then change any passwords that you have on your local browser. Now the reason why I said this is because I've been around long enough to know that hacks and exploits are a billion dollar industry, unfortunately. So as an example, FTX, big rug, they were docs, it doesn't matter. And then also when FTX were going down, you may remember there's like $400 million transferred out just like that. We don't know really who managed all of that. Then we've got BlockFi, Celsius, we have Slope Wallet. There are other wallets as well that have been compromised. Sometimes it's not even the fact that the team have anything to do with it. You can go and actually have a contractor and a contractor could leave something open. You even have this thing in DeFi depths where an auditor can find something, know that it's a bug that most people would miss, they can leave it open, they cannot mention it, and then maybe there's a TVL increase in the DAP, they go and extract value. And well, they go and hack it, right? They go and exploit it, and that's just what happens. This is what happens in the real world as soon as there's actually money involved. Now, having said that, I'm not gonna just go and watch a video and think, okay, I'm gonna go and say something like this. So I did a few things and I spent hours on this and this was an absolute waste of time. If I had the ability to actually speak to somebody and get a good, smart response, like what I did today, then I wouldn't have to worry about that, but I didn't. So this is basically what my process was. So I went to ChatGBT and I pinged it. Like what is Cursed Chrome, right? Is Cursed Chrome a bad app? And then we've got the information here, yes. Then I took the code that was publicly available for me to inspect. And this is from the actual Grass app or Grass extension. And I plugged it in here. I said, this code references Cursed Chrome. Does this mean the app has Cursed Chrome in it? We'll scroll on down right to the bottom, of course, because it's quite extensive. And this is the answer. Yes, the provided code references Cursed Chrome. Specifically, it mentions Cursed Chrome in the comments indicating that includes instructions related to the Curse Chrome server and the WebSocket connections used for it. This suggests that the code is intended to interact with or be part of the Curse Chrome extension, etc, etc, etc. Basically, it is advisable to avoid running this code and remove any suspicious Chrome extensions immediately. That is what I went with. Now, today, I pinged at this. If there is a comment, because uh, it's a comment, is it 100% certain it was used in the code? And no, it's not 100% certain. However, comments are often used by developers to leave notes, explain intentions, or provide instructions. Basically, if you don't get an answer from the team that satisfies you, if you see a comment that says, this has an app which can take over your browser, that means that this has an app, or this is an app that can take over your browser at least sometime in the past. Now, as it turned out, Apparently, that wasn't like the first build. There was an element of that particular software because it is open source and it's meant for different use cases, but there was an element in there. It's since been removed, but the comments are still in the extension. Now, I didn't just stop there. I do research very, very intelligently and in a thorough way. I also had a look at the Git book and I came here and I typed in audit. Nothing on audit. All this feedback has been given to Andre and I would say that something like this is probably far more net positive than net negative. In fact, I think it's hugely net positive because they didn't have a lot of transparency on so many things. And for some reason, they didn't think it was super, super valuable. I'm gonna go over that thesis later and I don't mind if I upset people. Realistically, I like the app. I think it has value, but I think they need to be more transparent with some things. Now, the next part I'm gonna talk about is the fact that I sent a researcher into Discord 
and they went and pinged. The researcher was polite. He asked, you know, have seen something on this regarding cursed chrome. What is the statement from the team? Is there an announcement? Why isn't there anything on Twitter? This could affect potentially millions of people because this is used by millions of people. And uh, literally the replies were just rubbish. They were rubbish replies that have been pointed out once again to Andre. And look, there's like, there's running a company and there's running a Discord. You can't do it all. Like I can't do everything in, in what I'm doing with just content. But there are certain things that you want to happen in a Discord server. And when you get a credible kind of well-mannered person asking for something, you provide that information because this is how it works in crypto. It's like, here's a dApp, here's how it's covered. If you have any questions, go to Discord. This is how it's supposed to go. It's not supposed to go like, if you have any questions, go to Discord. But if it's FUD, don't worry about it. If it's FUD, expect them to laugh at you. And what the actual reaction was, was like, you can look at yourself. I'm not going to tell a person's name, but if you want to, you can go and have a look at Curse Chrome. Probably not worth it because I think we've fixed the situation now, but it was just laughable, the responses. The responses from the mods, and also from the team. The community, however, which I expected, were just stupid. And my researcher wasn't the only person that pinged in there. Now, why didn't I just go myself? Maybe they would have recognized my name or someone in the community would and be like, hey, can you go and answer this person's questions? These are, you know, it's a credible person and I think you should answer these questions. But what if there was an actual contractor there that did have something open and then they saw that or they were tipped off and they did actually go and exploit. They went and exploited hundreds of wallets, thousands of wallets overnight. If something like that happened, then we're in big trouble. So what exactly should we do? I did what I thought was right. The researcher did exactly what he was told to do. He did it well, and he got a response that was just gross. Basically, there are enough red flags to warrant me saying, I'm removing this extension. Fortunately, Andre got in touch, and then we had a conversation, and I got him to prove how this was a trustworthy extension. And now I'm gonna show you. So none of this is easy, by the way. Like I literally needed the CEO to hold my hand, answer all my questions. And those that follow this channel know that I'm very direct and happy to be direct. I'm also nice most of the time, but basically I wanted the facts and I wanted them as fast as possible. And if I didn't get an answer, I just repeated the question until I got an answer. And I think, I think this was a very good experience. So this was the audit. Now, if we go to grass, we can come on down and this is what we see. I've never heard of this. I'm not an expert in this sort of stuff, but I've never heard of it. That is our only indication that there was some sort of audit. Then when we go here, we don't see a typical audit like we would in crypto. We see there's two different apps. This isn't even for the extension, by the way, this is for a completely separate app. And we go into this and we don't have any information the only thing that we have is if we close this one and go to this one, which is a Windows app, and then go app sources, app metadata, we can see that there are different uh, virus scanners that actually have okayed this app. So they haven't seen anything dodgy with it. There's nothing to suggest that something needs to be fixed or something is open or anything like that. Then I had to get another link in order to actually understand what was even checked. And this is app esteem certification requirements. So well, here they, here they are. You can look at the table. Basically, apparently it means it passed all of these things. Apparently. It's still vague. It's still vague as far as I'm concerned as an audit. And what this tends to cost by the looks of things is maybe like $1,300 to $1,000 per month for the audit service. So then I was showing this virustotal.com and how you could basically upload a file and it will tell you if there's a virus there. However, then we have to go and check. Is VirusTotal good? Is VirusTotal 100% reliable? And we go through a few different things and like any tool, it has limitations, but that's okay. Literally all tools have limitations, but I've come to the conclusion that VirusTool is fine. We can use VirusTool. So now we have to go and actually download the different dApps. So we go to store, we can get the grass desktop node, we can download that, download it for Windows. You need a referral code. I've been given a one-time referral code, so I'll download this. Otherwise you can get one from Discord if you like. We'll download this here and we'll go back. It of course gives us all the information on how to install this if you're Mac, Windows or Linux. So that's smart, that's done really well. Congratulations there. 
You can also get the Grass Community node. You can download this. And this is a web extension, but it bypasses the web extension store. So we'll download this and we'll go and save. So you're quite often using this in different products for like beta testing before they're actually approved in the Chrome store. So we're at virus total and I'm going to go and upload this file, but I think I actually want to show you what I'm uploading so you can see it yourself. I'll just put all these files into a folder so you can see them all. So I've put them all in here because, well, they're in our music file, but we don't use music really, do we? So this is it here. This is the .exe. We push it in here and it does a test. Now there's a couple of things here. Now I've already verified this with the CEO. I did it. I took a screenshot. I said, explain this, not a virus. So the way that this works is if it's a proxy tool and it is a proxy tool, if you don't know what that means, chat GBT it or watch a video because it takes too long to explain. But basically your computer has been used to do a service for another server. And this one here, also not a virus proxy. So it does say that it's a proxy, which it is. So that's the first part. Okay. Now let's have a look at the Mac. So if we come back into the grass store and we go to download here, we change this to Mac, we can go Silicon or Intel. I think most people are on Silicon, put in a new code, download. We'll put this in our music file, of course. Let's give this a refresh. There it is. Our DMG, we put it in and this is deemed safe. Now, remember, I also downloaded the grass community node. So this is the extension and I'm going to grab this and I'm going to drag it in and this has no issues. And I also have another one, which is the actual extension that I'm currently using. But I want to show you how you can do it so that you can verify it yourself. So we find the extension like this and we also install this one, extension source downloader. Then we come here and then we just click on this and it says, well, it automatically sees it. We can see it here. Here, same, same, download as CRX, put in our music file, go ahead and delete that, save it again. Yes. And then we'll jump back in here, give this a refresh. Here it is. This is fine. This is good. So now we've checked everything and you've seen the only issue. The issue was this one here, and I will seek clarification on this. So now at this stage, if you've decided you do want to run this, completely fine. I'm going to still give you some security tips, but the security tips would apply to everybody and every single dApp that you actually use because I'm very strict with my security and I think you should be as well. I'm not going to show you how to install the Grass desktop node, but what I will show you is get Grass here. Now, just for transparency, these are my referrals. Nothing crazy, but you're welcome to use it, of course. So we come into this and we inspect the pop-up. This pop-up's over on this page. Let me pull it over. Then we go to sources and then we come to background. And this is how you actually find out what's going on. So the reason why this is here, these are comments. Now, the reason why these have been removed, but they just haven't been updated in the Chrome Web Store is apparently because when it comes to like minor things like this, Chrome is not going to push stuff through very quickly. Like Chrome has a group of devs, I guess, that check things to try and keep out malicious things. Having said that, there are things that actually do go through, unfortunately, which is why every now and then there's someone that gets exploited in some way. Now, one thing that I was told is that if you install the other version, which requires a few more steps, but you get more rewards, you cannot see anything. And remember, these are just comments. So they're literally just comments put there. When we checked it, we could see that there was nothing malicious in the code. So how would I personally install this? So my computer right here is a decently powerful computer. It's used for crypto and it's used for like video editing. It does not have any random applications whatsoever. It doesn't have any games could have games like via Steam or whatever, but it has no apps that I do not trust. And this is how you should treat your Web3 computer. Don't go to websites that you think you shouldn't go to. Also, some people like to use a VPN in crypto. And if you do, you cannot use Grass. This has to be your actual IP address. Now, of course, not everyone has two different computers. Some people don't. In which case, at a bare minimum, I would have two different browser profiles. So you can see here, we've got this one and this one. There's nothing in here. There's no Twitter. There's no Phantom Wallet, Soulflare Wallet, MetaMask. There's nothing like that. However, if I go to this one, then I do have this one. And if I go to another browser, then I do have MetaMask. I've kept everything deliberately separate. If you wanted to download the app, maybe you would consider using a different user account. Remember, this is not specific advice for Grass. This is just specific advice in general. So maybe you can have on Windows, 
your normal account, your user account here, and then you've got a separate one that stays logged in and it works like that. Maybe that works. Maybe the same thing applies to Mac, or maybe you are happy to have it on your actual PC that you work on. That's entirely up to you. Now let's actually talk about grass to finish in a positive light. We've put everything through a decent amount of scrutiny and I will be using it as per the recommendations I just gave. Of course, nothing's financial or computer advice or security advice, but let's have a look and see what's happening in this, in this ecosystem. So Epoch 7 is the final epoch of the grass close beta. Now, maybe this is speculation from me, maybe it isn't. This is a, a week ago or thereabouts. The final epoch. So they've been farming points essentially for 400 days, which is a very long time. They've done a couple of different fundraising rounds. You can probably go and find the tweets. First one was like a million dollars. Then I think the next one was three and a half. And I've heard rumors that they maybe have done a third one. Maybe they haven't. Maybe they're closing it. I'm just unsure there. So we won't go based on rumors. But when token, I don't know. But if you're doing a final epoch, that would probably be a, a fairly decent kind of, you know, indication that something's happening soon, right? How long does the epoch last? I'm not sure. You'll have to jump into Discord and politely ask and hopefully you get the right answer. But maybe this is still a time that you want to jump in. One bit of information that I was given, this relates to Reddit and it relates to training LLMs on a huge amount of information. So apparently this is effectively like up-to-date or fairly real-time information on Reddit. And you can take all of this and train it in an LLM with some pretty advanced GPUs and you can train AI on it. Now, nobody gives out this sort of information for free. It has a huge amount of value. And what I heard from Andre is Google, Microsoft, they used to have servers that would go and scrape all the data, which effectively is what Grass actually does from your PC. But then they stopped doing that with Reddit and instead they said, all right, we'll just buy the data. So this is very, very cool. This is very cool. This is similar to Uprock. Uprock does it from your phone. This does it from your computer. And potentially a token will be coming soon. Now, if we go to Wales Market, we can see the grass point price. A point is something just given, which will convert to some sort of airdrop somehow. However, you know, these things tend to go down unless there's some sort of hype and it has fallen down. It's fallen down. I don't think it had anything to do with the person's video or me saying what I said. The volume is up quite nicely in the last 24 hours. I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. But my major thing is with these sort of things, in my opinion, Grass has product market fit as long as we know that it's a safe app. However, the token, we have no information on the tokenomics. So when we have information on tokenomics, we can do another deep dive. It's clearly a very popular app. They've got over 2 million real users and apparently about 10 million registered users. Some will be Sybils and whatnot. So what should you be doing right now? Well, you can go and follow this referral link and then you can go and sign up if you're keen and you can get amongst it and see how you go. You can earn some points and then maybe sell them or just hold them for the token. Then what you should definitely do is verify your email address. You do this in rewards, verify the wallet address and then the next step. I don't know when this should be done by, so I'm just going to tell you to do it as soon as possible. If a token generation event is coming, this is one thing that helps prove that you're a real user. Also, Andre has just sent me this. This is a Trojan. This is an actual Trojan. So when it's a Trojan or when it's something that is very dangerous, you can see that it's labeled as being very dangerous. And back to the Windows app here. Once again, I'll read it verbatim. The three grass flags are related to proxying and those three fall under virus totals label server. So my understanding is that when you have a flag, it labels it as a virus. And on this occasion, because it's proxying, it's a server, a virus server. It's just a flag that it's a proxy. So that's grass. That's a deep dive. That's me being very, very transparent with all the research. I'm firing it up again, but remember, I use my own very strict security you may as well put it into a different profile. It just keeps things more organized as well. Now, before we end off, there's probably gonna be a couple of different comments. One type of comment will be along the lines of someone really passionate about grass, and they're gonna say things like, you shouldn't have fudded, you shouldn't have said what you said, you should have done a really deep dive like you've just done now, you should have done that beforehand. The reality is you need to probably rewatch the video. No one's gonna get on a call with me for 60 minutes 
and go through everything and let me point out everything that could be improved, it, that just wouldn't have happened. And I do think this was exceptionally net positive. Then there'll be some people that were using it, but now they do not want to use it and they're going to wonder what should you do? Well, in terms of just changing passwords, it's good security to change your passwords anyway. And then it's also, it's a good idea to use a different profile with different extensions because then that doesn't slow down your main profile that you use to go and do your crypto research. So there's method and to the madness and there's method to the security and efficiency of how my mind works. And then there's a whole hoax of other people that are probably going to appreciate this and some that will not even in the slightest. And that's okay. At the end of the day, if you liked it, fantastic. We'll catch you in the next video.